Hello, I'm Michael Parker, and this is episode one of Freak Show Friday. Every Friday, I'm going to bring you one or two or three of the weirdest stories of the week. Today, it is a big one. It is the single story for the week, and it is about a distant star that possibly has alien megastructures surrounding it. The star in question is called KIC 8462852. That's not a particularly interesting name, but that is the name of it. And uh, right now the internet is abuzz with stories that emerged this week that it looks like it is possible based upon the data that we see about this star that there are some type of objects, well there are clearly objects, we know that, but some type of objects that are obscuring light, making the star appear to dim. This star is so far away from us, you cannot see it, but it can be seen with the Kepler telescope. And one way that we discover planets is by looking at stars and then judging how the light dissipates. It gets brighter or it gets darker. If it gets darker, that means that a body is passing in front of it. And oftentimes this is the planet of the star. And that's how we've discovered a lot of new planets, thousands of them. So that brings us to KIC 8462852. That is a snappy, catchy name, right? So this star, we started looking at it in 2009. And a couple of papers have just come out, one by Tabitha Boyajian. She's a postdoctoral fellow at the Yale University. And what it describes is a star that's unlike any other star. This star is 1,480 light years away. And that is a plane, which is much closer. This star appears to have light perturbations, meaning it gets darker at certain times. And this is unusual because it doesn't seem to follow what would be normal expectations. If it were planets, if it were some type of explainable phenomena. And the dips in the light have been so extreme, sometimes 15, even up to 22% of the light has dimmed from the sun, this means that whatever is passing in front of this planet is very, very large. For example, if the planet Jupiter passed in front of a star or a planet that size, it would probably only amount to about 1% of light being dimmed from the star. But in this case, we've got this situation where we've got 15 to 20 plus percent dimming. This is very, very strange. So that brings in the thoughts of a gentleman named Jason T. Wright. He's an assistant professor of astronomy and physics at Penn State. And part of his specialty is looking for potential signs of other world intelligence. Now, if you look at the stories that are appearing in the paper right now and online, you'll find that both of these scientists are kind of backing away from the idea that whatever is causing the light to go up and down in front of the star is clearly evidence of alien cultures. But at the same time, and I quote, Jason T. Wright said this, it looked like the kind of thing you might expect an alien civilization to build. So what would they build? Well, it's the idea of something like a Dyson sphere. And a Dyson sphere would be a object, very, very massive, um, that would rotate around a star, gathering its energy, then reflecting it somewhere else, uh, possibly to a planet in a more hospitable zone. So in effect, what you're doing with this Dyson sphere, and when I say sphere, it doesn't mean that there is a sphere around the sun. What it could mean is that there's a single object or there are many objects, and perhaps they are laced together in some type of a net, but they are around the star itself, and they're gathering that energy and possibly reflecting it or sending it to another planet remote place uh, where that energy is harvested and used. 
The Dyson Sphere was an idea that's been around, I believe, since the 60s, uh, created by a guy named Freeman Dyson. And his idea is, you know, what if a civilization years ahead of ours built thousands of gigantic solar panels, huge, and put them in an orbit around the sun? So there's that possibility. And this is not something as far out as it sounds because, you know, literally for several years now, we've considered the possibility that the Kepler telescope would potentially come across some form of solar uh, archaeology like this, some kind of interstellar archaeology as it were. And this could potentially be what this is. Now, that being said, as I mentioned before, these, these scientists are kind of trying to distance themselves from the verdict that it is alien. They're trying to say, well, you know, maybe this could be some kind of unforeseen uh, natural element. They've already looked at their equipment, they've already looked at the data and ruled out, you know, errors on that part. So the next thing they started looking for were things like comets, um, cosmic debris, to, uh, to quote Frank Zappa, um, some type of naturally occurring matter that's in the universe already that's possibly obscuring the light. The problem with that is, is generally these types of things would be around younger suns and this looks to be a, you know, a mid-level to mature sun. So the chances of that happening are not as, uh, are not as likely. But some form of comets, not completely unlikely, Perhaps there is a moving sun that's closer, and I think they mentioned that there's one star that's about 150 million uh, miles away that could be bringing more traffic in the way of debris into that area of space. So now Wright and Boysian are working with SETI, and what they want to do is look for radio waves, very large radio waves. And if that happens, then they would follow that up by using the Very Large Array in New Mexico to see if those radio waves were emitted by some type of technological source. And that would be like the radio waves that come off the Earth and just go into space and whoever wants to listen to them could. If this goes as planned, that would probably happen in January uh, going into next fall. So we may very soon have an answer. Now imagine this, if you wanted to create a beacon to the rest of the universe, but you didn't want to send it in the form of a radio wave or some type of information in that way, you could just build something, again, a megastructure, very, very large, have it orbit in front of the sun and just have it open and close louver type devices. And what would, be seen by anyone wanting to look at it is, well, wait a minute, this sun is dimming and brightening in a pattern. You're really creating a beacon out of the existing star, and this could be an unmanned structure. It could be something that potentially lasts forever, unless it's just destroyed by uh, you know, a meteorite or something hitting it. So that is another idea that has been floated that extraterrestrial intelligences might create beacons uh, with these megastructures surrounding stars. Regardless, uh, is this just cosmic debris? Are these comets? Is this a alien megastructure? What is it? Is it something that we haven't discovered yet? We don't know, but even skeptics like Phil Play of Bad Astronomy says, hey, I don't think it's aliens, but I'm interested. This is a good idea. My name is Michael Parker. This has been episode one of Freak Show Friday. We'll be back every week. Please comment below and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.